Hello, my name is Todd Rothman, and welcome back to Organic Chemistry 1. In this video, we're going to cover the acid and base concepts, and in particular, we're going to talk about bronsted lowry theory. Now, we've talked about an introduction to bronsted lowry as well as Lewis, but this video is specifically going to focus in on the topics related to bronsted lowry theory. And so here are the topics here. There are six topics that we're going to go over, and they're all going to kind of help us frame what we need to know for the purposes of learning organic chemistry, okay? So we're not going to go into as much equations or deriving things. We're just going to learn how to use the information that we need in order to approach organic chemistry in a successful way, okay? So let's get started. The first thing that we see here is we're going to talk about conjugates. Now, what are conjugates? Now, remember, a conjugate is a relationship term. This is a relationship between two molecules. So the relationship between them is that one of them can have an extra proton, and the other can have one less proton. So the difference is one more or less protons between the two molecules. Okay, so if it has an extra proton, an extra hydrogen, then it's considered to be the acid form. Whereas if it has one less hydrogen, and that's the only difference, then it's considered to be its conjugate base form. But again, this is a relationship term between a pair of molecules. Okay, so let's take a look over here at this chart on the right. Notice how if I have acid HA, and I was to pull off its proton, it would become A. Now, notice that because the acid was neutral, that it becomes the negative form. And this is a trend that you're going to have to connect with. Okay, so a neutral acid, after it loses its proton, becomes a negative conjugate base. Okay, now what if the acid is positive to begin? Well, then after it loses its proton, it becomes neutral. And you want to remember this trend. This is extremely important because you're going to have to think quickly on what the structure looks like as a, a base or an acid form of it, and you, this trend will help you out. Let me show you what's happening here first. So imagine if I have an H and it's got two electrons to A. Now, if it's neutral, right now A has the, the, the exact number of electrons to counter the number of protons that it has inside, right? Now, right now it's neutral because A only owns one of those two electrons between H and A, right? So if you could think, let's say this yellow electron is owned by A, and let's say this blue electron, so I'll change the color, let's put H as blue, so here the H owns one electron. Now, if this A was to take both electrons to itself in order to release a proton, right? So now we have an H that lost its proton. I'll do it in blue. Here's H. It lost its proton, and so therefore it's now positive because it has a plus in the middle, a proton, but it has no electron to stabilize, to counter it. Okay, but what happened to A? A, on the other hand, takes both electrons, the one that it owns and the one that hydrogen owned, which means that at the end of this reaction, the net result is that A has an extra electron that it didn't own to begin, right? So that's why A becomes negative. Now it has one more electron on the outside that's not balancing or countering a positive from the inside, within the inside, okay? That's what we're seeing here. And the same thing applies if, let's say, we have H and then we have A, but A is positive. Now, what that means is that A, right now, only owns one of those two electrons in that covalent bond, right? So the red electron is owned by A, and H owns the blue one. Remember how covalent bonds form by the sharing of electrons. Each atom brings one electron to the table. Okay, so what happens if A takes both electrons to itself? So now H is positive again because it lost its electron, has an extra plus in the middle, uh, has a plus in the middle with no electron on the outside to stabilize, counter it. But what happened to A? Well, A now owns two electrons, and so it has that extra electron that it didn't have from the beginning. 
but since it was positive to begin, now it's neutral because it's got that extra positive that it initially had being countered with that new electron that it owns. So now A is neutral. That's what's happening here. That's it. Okay, I know I took a little bit of time to show that to you because it really is important that you could understand this basic idea, okay, that if something is neutral and it takes an electron, it's going to become negative, right? If something is positive and it takes an electron, it becomes neutral. And that's what's happening here with this diagram. So just remember this diagram and you're good to go, okay? Just remember when something is charged and when it's not charged, okay? Now here are some real examples. Now if we look at the first one, we have HCl, and the only difference between this and after the arrow is that the Cl no longer has an H. So we know this right here must be the acid form because it has an extra H, and this is the base form, the conjugate base, because it has an extra C, um, it has no H, right? So it does not have an extra proton. So one more, one less proton. That's the relationship. And the same thing applies here. Now, let's just, before I jump on, notice that this is neutral, and so no surprise, neutral becomes negative. So the Cl becomes negative. It gained the extra electron. Now what about here? Here it's positive NH4, and when it loses its proton, it becomes neutral NH3. Here it's neutral, it becomes negative. See that? And they're all differences of 1H. Now, I want you to recognize an important detail. Some acids or some molecules can have more than one pair relationship. So, for example, water can either lose an H or we could have started where it had one extra H. So remember, water can act as both an acid or a base. See that? So look at the relationship between, let's say, these two right here. Or let's consider these two over here. So these two right here. Well, in the first case, this is the acid because it has one extra H compared to water. This is the base. However, in the next example, water is the acid because here water has an extra H compared to the right side, which is a base, conjugate base. So these are conjugates. These two pairs uh, in relation to water, the left and right side of it, are conjugates to water. However, please note that these two over here are not conjugates because there are more than one H difference between them. So H3O and OH- minus are not conjugates of each other, okay? H3O plus and water are, or water and uh, hydroxyl, hydroxide is, but not H3O plus and hydroxide. So this is a conjugate relationship, and this is a conjugate relationship. And so Recognize that conjugates are always one more or one less H. That's what you have to keep in mind, okay? And here's an example where you see a molecule in the middle that can actually have more than one conjugate relationship. Okay, that's what we're looking at. All right, so now this is the basic idea. It really is important that you could recognize a conjugate relationship. You should be able to see an acid and its conjugate base or a base and its conjugate acid and so on. So let's do that right now. Let's take a look at the first problem and actually the second problem. So this is from the theory packet of problem, the question packet that you have. You should have downloaded it from the website and it says theory questions. Do the first two. I need you to pause the video and try these two problems. Now again, it's so important that you try these problems before I do it with you, okay? So I'm gonna wait now for you to pause the video so you can try the problems. Pause the video, I'm waiting. Okay, so I'm assuming that you paused the video, right? So let's go on and start with the first one. So here it says draw the base, the conjugate base, for the following acids. Now I want to point out a few important details. The first thing is, if you look at the first molecule, it has carbons around it, right? Remember how each of these points represents a carbon.